Jeff, what else do we know about the Bucks and their feelings about Trask? You know what's funny, Laura? When I started reaching out to people this offseason within the organization, I kind of was like, hey, what about Jimmy G? Hey, what about, you know, like just going down the list. And the response was actually like, hey, like what about Kyle Trask? Like from their end, like he's, we believe that he's actually the best quarterback in the division. And I, I, I say that, you know, jokingly a little bit, but I think they are kind of serious about this. And maybe not from the standpoint that they're viewing Kyle Trask as being the long-term franchise guy. I don't think that they're trying to go that far in their statements, but rather, hey, look, we went all in with Tom Brady the past several years. We are now sort of paying the price for that. We're all on the same page with it. We all understand what we did. We got one Super Bowl out of it. And now we're going to see what we have in this young guy. I don't think it's that bad of an admission on their part. And I don't think it's that wrong necessarily for them to say, let's give Trask a shot. Yeah, you know, when you think about Trask, I think a lot of people have forgotten what he was in college, right? We only saw him in limited play at Florida a couple years ago. So Matt Miller back with us, our draft analyst. Remind us what type of prospect he was, the traits that Tampa liked from him as a Heisman finalist. Yeah, it is hard to remember what he was like there. And so much has changed, I think. But Kyle Trask fits what Tampa wants to do, like Bruce Arians said there. He fits that prototypical pocket quarterback, someone that does push the ball down the field very well. His jump from junior to senior season, that improvement was enormous. Now, he did have Kyle Pitts. He did have Kadarius Toney, who were great pass catchers. But we saw a lot of that, a lot of jump ball. He trusts his guys. He puts the ball in catchable spots. I think we saw him layer the ball really well that senior year to where if it's a back shoulder fade in the end zone, if it's a go route, if it's a slant, he's able to take something off of it, dial up different velocities, different speeds. But I thought he was... The number six quarterback in that draft, you remember there were five in the first round, but I did have a starter grade on him as, as a second round prospect, someone who if he had some time to maybe clean up his footwork, improve his agility a little bit. He could be a starter in the pros. Yeah, a lot of those highlights we just showed there, he was going toe for toe against Alabama in the SEC championship game in 2020. That Bama team went on to win the national championship. It was really good. Mina, what do you make of this idea that Trask will be the guy in Tampa? You know... Sometimes as a football team, you just got to be honest with yourself about where you are. And I think in doing this, it would signal that the Bucks are being honest about the fact that it's a little bit of a rebuilding point, which, by the way, is fine. And some teams never do that. They're in a division with a team in New Orleans that refuses to do that, <laughs> that shows up every year in, like, a new suit and nobody knows how they bought it. You know, like, it's, it's a different approach. And I think it is one that probably will serve Tampa well rather than chasing a free agent that might not get them over the hump um, because they don't have high draft picks. They don't have a lot of cap space. So it's... It actually makes sense to me that they might sit this year out and then revisit the quarterback question next season. Absolutely. Caleb Williams sweepstakes. Here we come. When you, you think know. about Kyle Trask, if you find a franchise <laughs> quarterback, then you're excited. If he's not a franchise quarterback, then you work on getting one next year. People don't understand how hard it is to win one Super Bowl. Mm. If you had to sell your organization for three years to win one Super Bowl and then rebuild, you take that every single time. Yeah. Tampa understands that, and now they're moving forward. Yeah, just so we know about cap space, the Bucks currently projected to be $58 million over the cap for 2023, over $20 million more than the next closest team in the Saints. So, interesting there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.